Hey guys, welcome to the Knot of the Week. Today we are continuing our knot tying display board with the bow line. I will pause for a second so all you haters can correct my pronunciation. Okay, so the purpose of the bow line is to tie a fixed loop. So when you have a fixed loop, it's not going to be adjustable, which means that if I were to pull on this either direction, it's not going to tighten up or loosen on me. And that's kind of the purpose of the bow line. It can be a, a great safety knot. So for rescue purposes, it can be also something you just use to have a fixed anchor point or a tie off. So there's many different applications for it, but as you'll see kind of what we'll do in the end here is I want to tie a backup in it and I'll explain kind of the reason why too. I, the way I like to start a bow line is I make a cue. So it's an overlapping cue and that's the way I remember it. So whatever your amount of slack here that you have in what, it, what will become your working end is what this is going to tie onto. So if I had a post or something like that, I would be tying around the post and then coming back through this. So you just need to make sure that whatever slack you have on this is enough to be able to tie on that. So again, this cue, the way I picture it is, is like this. So what that looks like is it overlaps like this. So it's forming a bite, flipping it over on top of itself, and that's your starting point. And the reason I do this is because I've now got this in my hand, and no matter what happens, I can quickly tie on to something uh, if I had to. So this was great during like underwater knot tying when I was in the Navy because I would swim down to the trunk line to tie onto with this in my hand. So I already had this fixed loop, then I would tie just like that. So that's kind of the, the impetus of this. It's a quick way to tie it. There's many different ways to tie it, but I like focusing on this because to me it's, it's faster. So take that standing part or what becomes the working end of the line and come back through the back side of that cue that you made and then you're going to come down and around the standing part. So it comes around the back side of that and then back through where you just pass it through. The checkpoint here is that your working end now is on the inside of this big loop that you tied off onto. So if it's not on the inside, if it's on the outside, you tied it wrong. So what that would look like is if I came this way around the back, now my line is on the outside of that and I don't want that. I want it to come around, back through here, and be on the inside of this loop. So now you take the loop itself, as well as your working end, and the standing part down here, and pull to tighten those up. So what you're left with is extra line on the inside, and what I like to do with that is just tie a simple half hitch to kind of secure that. So when, all, when this is all tightened up, the way it should be when you tie a bow line, you've basically got this extra half hitch in there for, for protection. So it's kind of a checkpoint to make sure that you can see that it's still tied, and also it just gives it a little more security to, to put that half hitch in the end. So it's kind of like a little backup, and that's the way I like to tie it. So that is the bow line, and I want to show you what it looks like on our knot tying board real quick. So you can see the progression. We've got the knot, or sorry, the square knot, thief's knot, and then now our bow line. So what I've done, and what I will continue to do, one second, is that I've got some heat shrink tubing, and I found that this is going to be the best way to display these. So this is 1 8 inch heat shrink. I've got my little handy dandy case there to store this in. So what I do is I take that line that I've got on the spool, and I actually cut a little bit of this off. I wedge it onto the line itself, and then I fuse it with just a lighter. You don't need a lot um, of heat. You don't have to have a little butane torch, um, but you can actually slip this onto the end here. And if you rotate it or twist while you're putting this on, the direction of the twist that's naturally in the rope, you can get that on there, no problem. And then I just kind of measure the distance here, and that's about, I'd say it's about a, a quarter inch or so that you want in the end, and that's kind of what I'm shooting for as I'm tying all these. I opted to go with the small diameter line because I plan to have a lot of knots on my DIY knot board display, so that's kind of what we're doing. All right, so that's the bow line. We will continue next time with hitches on our DIY knot board display, and we'll probably have a few hitches before we move on to something else, but I wanted to at least show you a couple of these and how we're going to tie them and how they look on the knot tying display board. 
not board display as we progress with them. Uh, one last thing I wanted to mention too is that you guys sent in some tips on a couple of videos ago and even in the last video kind of talking about the things to set those lines on uh, or to set the lines in place. Uh, I picked up some Mod Podge. I'm going to try that just as an alternative, um, but I've thought about a couple of different things, whether that's nails and Mod Podge or glue. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do yet, but anyway, keep it posted.